Hi everyone, this is Ashley from Las Vegas. I'm here with Remy Saluco. She is a credit expert. She's going to help us today in how to boost our credit and prepare for the home buying process. So thank you for having me. I'm excited. A lot of people want to buy a home, but they don't know where to start. They don't know anything about credit or they have questions. So let's answer some questions we've collected from some people here and educate. As always, if you have questions later, you can always message us and we'll be able to answer you that way. Awesome. All right, Remy. First off, what are some myths that you found in your credit well, one of the biggest myths is really that credit cards are bad. You know, a lot of people assume that because you're automatically going into uh, a debt or you have a, a limit of money that is yours, you have to constantly return it. For misinformed people, that's usually like seen as a bad thing. However, in this country, we use credit and specifically revolving credit in order to show how reliable of a borrower you are with money that is being lended. And I mean, that would definitely apply for a home buying process as well, except that this is an interest credit. So one of the myths is that credit is bad for your credit score. Credit card is bad for your credit score. And that's definitely not the case. You definitely want a credit card and you definitely want a variety of credit trade lines. So is there a number of credit cards? that you have. I've also heard too many credit cards is bad. Um, it's never bad to have too many credit cards as long as you're always maintaining them below thirty percent utilization. The sweet spot though is at nine percent. So my biggest advice really is if you want to have a lot of credit cards, you're, you're applying to them in a strategic way where it's not affecting your credit history. So never too bad to have too many credit cards as long as you're really good at taking care of them. Uh, so what would you consider is good, excellent, or poor? Well, I would say a good credit score is 640 and above. Um, a poor credit score, I would say, is anything below 599, you know, and I would say excellent credit score is 720 and above. So you're really in like that red, yellow, like green, right? You really want to be at that, that sweet spot, especially 640 for that conventional world, right? Right. I was going to say, some people think they have bad credit and actually their credit is still in good standing and will still allow them to buy a home. So six forty or above is good for a home buy? Yeah, definitely. Um, what factors would you say cause credit to drop? Well, there's multiple factors that are involved in calculating your credit score. Uh, the FICO scoring module, which lenders use in order to qualify you for a loan, um, goes as follows. So it's 35% payment history, um, you have 30% credit card utilization, uh, you have 15% credit history, 10% and 10% on both ends for variety and for inquiries. So that's that's the the percentage of that. You definitely post this up here if you want it to, so people can use that to their advantage. Yeah, we can post it on the side. Um, and then when you do have something that affects your credit score, usually how many points? With the percentages in mind, you know how I was telling you 35, 30, um, 15, 20, 10, with those in mind, you can kind of calculate and estimate how much it would drop. So if you miss a payment, because that's 35% of your credit score, you can see your score drop as high as 60 points. So that's why that's so important for you to pay your bills on time. Uh, with a new credit inquiry, if you know you don't qualify for a credit card, then you still inquire for one, that's 10% of your score, right? You can see your score drop between 10 to 15 points. So it really just depends on what it is you're attacking, right? So if you're attacking your, your payment history, which is the heftiest one, you're definitely going to see the biggest drop. Okay. Don't apply for credit cards when you know you can't get one. Do it! <laughs> don't do it! So here's a good question. Um, Everybody's different, of course. They may or may not have been affected by unemployment or COVID. If they have, are there any systems in place or any programs that would help them bring their credit back to life? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, especially during 2020, lost their jobs. We're in Las Vegas, so Las Vegas is a big hospitality, hospitality city. So imagine, no people coming into the city, no people having jobs. It, 
it's definitely depleted a lot of people from their funds, their savings, and their credit score, right? If you don't have funds coming in, you don't have savings, you're reaching for your credit cards, if you're lucky to have credit cards. So um, I guess one of the things in place right now that most people wouldn't consider is budgeting. Budgeting is important because ultimately, if you have a lot of money coming in and you have no way of systemizing your expenditures, it's the same amount of money coming out. You want to budget so you can pay down your potential debts that you accumulated during COVID, right? If you have your job back, you want to make sure that you're paying off the debts that you already owe so you can bring your, your credit score back to life. And if you have late payments, missed payments, don't think that that's it. Like, they're real, they exist, there's nothing I can do about them. That's not true. There's templates in the order that you can use to send to bureaus and ask for forgiveness for late payments, especially if you've been consistent with your payments thereafter, right? So those things should not be affecting you anymore if you are, you know, on point as of, you know, recovering and getting a job back and stuff like that. There's definitely ways around it. Um, do you have any tips or tricks that you could recommend someone do to increase your score? Yes. Auto payments is great. You want to make sure your stuff is on auto pay so that you don't forget and you actually have a late payment or a missed payment. That automatically helps you score. Um, another tip is really to try to monitor your credit. If you're not constantly looking at how your credit score is moving based on what you're doing, um, you really don't know how to go about it. Um, credit Karma is great. Uh, smart credit is great. Credit sensitivity is great. Your bank sometimes offers you a, a monitoring tool as well. So my recommendation is on a weekly basis if possible, definitely monitor your credit. Um, that's going to help you the most in making sure that you're on top of your things by the end of the month. Okay. Now, mentioning monitoring tools like credit karma and whatnot, are they accurate or are they pretty close to your actual? Well, Credit Karma, Credit Sesame, uh, they're all vantage points. So the FICO scoring module is more direct to the account reported to all three credit bureaus. Credit Karma only uses two credit bureaus, and those are just accounts that they get offered. They don't get offered the same scoring module. So that's why Credit Karma is considered a vantage point, just like Credit Sesame as well. So they're accurate in accounts. I wouldn't say they're necessarily as accurate in the score itself. However, knowing what accounts are coming on and off your report is just as valuable. And having Credit Karma, if it moves up in Credit Karma, your FICO scoring module is moving up. It's just a score that's not a precisely the same. Good to know what's going on there. Um, I'm sure it can be very emotional. What type of emotions do you see from clients coming in wanting to do better, wanting to uh, increase their credit score? Um, how do you see them from the beginning to the end? Um, well, I've, I've seen a handful of clients from the beginning to the end, and the beginning is always hard because I, I didn't think it'd be a convincing factor to try to fix your credit. But it really is for a lot of people. Like a lot of people need to be convinced to get help. And it, the biggest emotion I get is frustration from people because they don't know. Like credit wasn't taught in our global education. So not knowing something and then trusting someone to help and educate you is definitely a frustrating and kind of, you know, it make, makes people very hesitant and maybe not as proactive when actually taking charge of changing, right? Um, towards the end, though, as people start seeing results, obviously it takes time, but as people start seeing results, obviously there's a different emotion there. You know, they start seeing results and they want more, and they can only start imagining what they're going to be able to qualify for or what their goals are. Like, most people don't have hope. They feel a little hopeless and helpless sometimes because they don't know what to do without guidance. So. And so how would you keep people like that in a positive mindset? I'm very good with uh, following up with people, and I also like to be very transparent with people. You have to be. Like, you can't just tell someone, like, yeah, your score's going to be fixed. It's going to be, like, at 800. Like, you have to be very realistic. You have to break it down to people, and sometimes they don't like to hear these things, but then I tell them, like, ultimately, these are the bad parts of it, but here's the strategy. You know, and if you follow through with the strategy, I'll follow through with you as well. You know, and following up with people, reminding them and pushing them to, like, really put in their, their, their efforts and be proactive. Like, that's how I keep people getting 
getting their own results. Because in the end, I don't fix anybody's credit. You know, I'm, I'm definitely not the one, you know, doing all this stuff, but I am the one keeping people accountable to what they decided to endeavor. So, and I bet that's in real estate too. You can imagine people with due, due diligence and disclosures, you have to be on top of them and get it done, right? So it's great. Sounds like education, um, taking massive action, doing what it takes to get done, remembering the main reason why you are purchasing a home or needing to build your credit. What's the end result with this one? It's all worth it. So um, what are some things that people do when building credit? Or not to do oh, What not to do when building credit? Well, if you're already, every person's different, right? And every credit fact is different. But the general thing is if you're working on repairing your credit, you don't want to add any new credit trade lines unless they're strategic to your account. So if you don't have any credit history because you don't have any credit cards, it's a good strategy to get a credit card, right? However, let's say you have credit cards, you have credit history, and you're all like, I want to add another credit card just so I can get more in the mix. It's probably not the best strategy. Uh, so I would say first thing you want to do uh, or avoid to do when you're trying to fix your credit is just apply to any type of trade line without looking into depth what it is your credit score needs, right? So after you discover what your credit score needs, then I would say strategize. But definitely don't just do, I'm going to get a credit card or I'm going to, you know, get a car because the car is a different type of trade line. Um, so you want to make sure you don't just, just like when you're buying a house, you just don't want to put anything more into your history until you know exactly what it is you're, you're trying to repair. Trust the experts. Trust the experts. Exactly. You don't know what you don't know, so always ask first. Exactly. All right, the big question. Everyone wants to know, how do I fix my credit? How do I fix my credit? I mean, definitely tackle every factor of your credit score. Your payment history, your credit card utilization. You want to make sure those two, that's 65% of your credit card. If those two alone are on point, you can already see your credit score moving from whatever, from wherever it's at. Every single cycle. Um, and that's the biggest point to fix your credit for people. Like I tell people, yes, collections is um, a negative report and there's another strategy for that. Um, it's called disputing, and in the dispute process, you have consumer rights. It's called the Fair Credit Reporting Act, right? So that's the other play that you can go about. If you have negatives and you know in your heart that they're your negatives and there's no way you're going to get them removed, that's not necessarily true. You have consumer rights, you can dispute these negatives, and you can get them completely removed without having to settle if the bureaus do not act within the time frame that they really have, which is 45 days to respond to you. So it, it's called the Fair Credit Reporting Act. If you guys want to do a little bit more research on it, I definitely recommend you to because you are within your every right to create disputes for every negative, and you're within your every right to get responses from the bureaus as well. There's always a way. Always a way. Look and trust the process. Trust the process. Yeah. Big. And so how long would you say it takes for someone to rebuild their credit? And what's the fastest way to go about it? Well, if you have no negatives, then all that's affecting you is your credit history, credit utilization, and payment history, as well as inquiries and variety of cards. I would say the quickest way is credit my rent which will actually take your rental payments, your on-time rental payments from up to two years ago um, and use them as credit trade loans. So I've seen one of my customers who had zero you know, credit history go from an invisible credit score to 657 just because they reported two years of payments. Um, the other, and that was 32 days, so that took about 32 days, and you know, 640 is qualified. Um, the other way is by acquiring a secure credit card. Obviously, if you don't have a good credit score, and if you don't have credit history, you're not going to qualify for any credit card that has certain requirements. So a secure card does not have any requirements or a qualification process. It does not pull your credit, and it uses your own funds as the maximum amount. So you can start creating a credit trade line. And that one I've seen also work right below that 45 mark. Um, and that one helps a lot of people that have no credit cards, no history, and 
no payment history, of course. You have no credit card, so you can see your score just skyrocketing there after. All right. And so, is there a service out there where clients pay to boost their score by X number of points? I don't think X number of points, but there is definitely a service out there. The Credit My Rent is a specific one. That one, uh, it is a monthly payment if you want to use your rental payments as um, as a credit trade line. And also if you want to report two years worth of history. Um, the Secure Card is also in its, its own program. And again, like, the point increase can range from like 60 to, again, 657. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's a true story. And then, um, and then ultimately, if you want to do an overall credit restoration and credit building process, I do have our services with the United Credit Education Services. That at that point, they take you through a credit restoration process, but also through a credit education process. So the more you know about your credit and how to manipulate it, the quicker you'll start seeing results, and definitely the more of an impact it'll have on you. Before. So can you summarize more or less what the process is to repair credit? Yeah. So you get your credit pulled so we can see all the accounts accurate on your report, whether they're negative or you know any of your credit cards or any of your debit cards or any of your loans or anything like that, right? You get your credit pulled. Then at that point, if you have any negatives, dispute letters can be made for you. So you can verify your identity, verify your address, and dispute to the three credit bureaus at the same time. Within that 45-day time frame that they have to respond to you, you also have credit building tools with the payment history, the utilization, the inquiries. Um, there's templates for you so that if you do have late payments, you dispute them. If you do have closed accounts that are still affecting your, your report, which in a lot of cases that is the case, we have templates for that. Um, and you're sending all of this stuff out to the credit bureau through the mail, so it's certifiable. And if you have to, and if worse comes to worse, you take the bureau's report, right? If they don't respond, again, the Fair Credit Reporting Act legally provides you the opportunity to dispute, but also legally makes them respond to you. And if they don't, then it puts you in a position where you're, you're higher up. You're up, you know. Your safety point. net. It is. It definitely is. So that would be the process, and it's cycle. So at every cycle, you dispute a new thing. If something got removed, we create new cycles of the stuff that did it, and we continue nagging the bureau until they remove all of them. Or if worse comes to worse, and if you have to settle, which I hate that, but if you have to settle after a couple of disputes, at that point you can also settle with a dispute without the total amount. You know, so that that way you don't also have to divide your current funds, right? So, and so I'm sure there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that people are not aware of. Yeah. What well, what kind of happens behind the scenes that we don't necessarily realize? I like to tell people that people processing like credit, it's just people, it's just humans, right? So this is what's behind the scenes. You have people creating letters for you. You have people uh, receiving your accounts and putting them on your report. Like TransUnion is not a computer. It's a company with processors inside. So if you ever applied for something and you put it by hand and you have messy writing, they could have probably put incorrect or erroneous information on your credit report. This is what happens behind the scenes, to be honest, with 80% of credit reports in the United States. Misinformation is a huge thing out here. And if you've ever played telephone, right, the more information you pass down, the more diluted it becomes. So more room for error. And you should definitely be taking advantage of that in order to dispute. For sure, something so simple could be fixed like that. Exactly. Yeah. Is it more beneficial, do you think, to go through a credit agent such as yourself for credit repair or be referred to a lender? Well, lenders are very, very, very knowledgeable, especially because they have the ability to have a general report in front of them. Um, however, the lender has not endeavored certain education, like, for example, consumer rights and uh, legal jargon and, and things like that. I definitely recommend people to go with more of a credit specialist, a credit expert, not because lenders don't have the ability to uh, uh, have this information. Truth is, we all have the ability to have this information. We have our phones, right? But 
in a way, like you said, to go about it in a strategic way really does require an expert, a person who sees the effects of one action over the other. And sometimes one action is better than the other for a certain amount of pointage. And lenders may not have that direct knowledge, you know, unless, again, they've been get for their education. So I would say, from what I can see, lenders do a lot during the loan process. To throw one more thing at them, like credit repair, seems like it could be overlooked or not done to the best of its ability. So this is why Remy's here to help us. We're going to get some credit repaired the right way. She does this all the time. She knows the strategic way to do it. So I trust her. And now you have a resource of your own. Um, one more question for you. How is it, how is what you do different than other companies out there? Many people have had horror experiences or have heard horror stories, so we yeah. hold them back, they're a little nervous, hesitant, they feel like they can't get their credit repaired because of it. I tell people that I am a credit educator, not a credit repair agent. Our company really does a great job in educating people. You can't be deceived if you know what is happening. Most of the time people get deceived and put into situations where they pay a lot of money because they don't know, right? The company almost forces our clients to endeavor some education so that they can not only feel comfortable with the services, but so they, they can also help themselves achieve these results sooner. Because at that point, you know more about what it takes to get your credit score at a certain point. Um, I would say more than anything, education is key to your credit score going from zero to 100, you know, like real quick, <laughs> like, like that. You want to make sure, like I tell people all the time, like, I can't be there holding your hand, you know, watching you spend your credit card or how you decide to do things. But I can educate you and I can help you prevent certain actions from, from you know, kind of ruining your score. And that does require some, some education. So our credit education services have credit restoration, credit building, and in addition to that, it also has other aspects to it, like credit monitoring. Um, we have the will and trust. We have a budgeting tool, so it's a tool that helps facilitate your budgeting. And we also have debt payoff. So we offer multiple services to not just help you with your credit restoration process, but with your overall, you know, your fundamental finances. Because that goes hand in hand, definitely. Yeah, all the tools and services that you need, the first step is understanding your credit. Once you understand your credit, you can boost it up from there and reach all the goals that you have for yourself and your family. Exactly. Yeah. Well, thanks for me. Thank you for educating us and taking some time to do this little interview. Awesome. Cheers to that. Yeah. And have a good day. Talk soon. Talk soon. Thank you so much.